Esto sí está bueno. Mira te encendió. Si alabas a Jesucristo, sale bendecido. Ministerio Radial Impacto, junto a Malaquías Reyes, presentan Impacto Cristiano. Nuestro propósito es hacerle partícipe del mensaje que Jesucristo es el mismo ayer, hoy y por todos los siglos, y que solamente a través de él, su vida puede ser transformada e impactada por su gran amor y poder salvador. Desde este momento, con ustedes, Malaquías Reyes en Impacto Cristiano. Hello, my name is Joe Yers, and we have the pleasure today of having Representative Dennis Williams on the show today. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You've been a state representative now for 17 years, and this year you decided to run for mayor. That's correct. Uh, wh what motivated that switch? Well, Wilmington is in trouble. It's in serious trouble. And I looked at the field of candidates, and uh, I think it's going to take somebody who's going to have to have a strong relationship with Dover, because the only way Wilmington is going to be able to get out of its dilemma, its structural deficit, and this crime problem, it's going to have to deal with the capital. It's going to have to work with the governor. It's going to have to work with the General Assembly. Uh, it's going to take a strong person who understands budgets, and who understands state government, as well as local government. It's also going to take someone who knows law enforcement. I have all those qualities, and that's the reason I decided to jump in. Great. Um, on law enforcement, Wilmington struggles with a crime problem. They have the third highest crime rate of any city the same size in the United States. What's your plan? You've, you've mentioned a bold offensive. Can you elaborate on what exactly, what measures you plan to put in place? Well, we're going to do police work. We're, we're not going to ride by corners where there's 20 or 30 people on a corner, where we know people are drinking, using narcotics, because once that happens, you know there's going to be a problem later on in the evening or as hours go by. People get agitated when people are high on drugs, people are high on, on alcohol. There'll probably be people on those corners with firearms. You have to keep people moving. You have to go out and work in the community and get an understanding what exactly is going on in the community. What we plan to do is, we plan to go out, we're going to do an outreach program, we're going to look for people to come to the table, give up their guns, stop committing crime, we're going to give them all the social service avenues they need to get their life back on check. GED programs, job programs, job training. We will offer incentives to businesses to hire felons. But we're not going to let people run up and down the streets with firearms and having gun battles. This is not the way for people to live. There are senior citizens in their homes that are terrified. We know this for a fact. We're knocking on doors. We're talking to people. People are afraid to send their children to the playground. That's sad. That is truly sad. Children should be able to come home from school, go outside and play without a mother fearing something's going to happen to their child. I've talked to mothers. I've talked to fathers. And this is what we're getting. This is not Dennis Williams saying this. This is the community saying this. I mean, we've been pounding on those doors talking to folks. People are okay. fearful. They're very upset. Uh, one lady told us that she runs when she gets off the bus as it gets dark to get in the house. That, that's just sad. And that's something a Williams administration, we're not going to tolerate that. And I know it's a lot of bold talking, but we will implement a program of crime fighting that will that, match any state, any city in this nation. We will have anti-crime units out there. We will have patrol units out there. We will have police and community relations units. We will have meetings with the community, the clergy, the business folks, so no one can't say that we haven't reached out and offered an opportunity for everyone to come to the table to help us and bring solutions to us. Okay, and you mentioned the, another problem in Wilmington was the deficit. How are we going to make ends meet? How are we going to make a more aggressive crime-fighting plan in place as well as cutting costs? making sure they're controlled, making sure that that six million dollar deficit next year isn't bigger in the year coming. Well what we're going to do is we're going to hire grant writers, grant writers that's going to come in and write public safety grants. There's many public safety grants out there where you can get an anti-crime uh, unit paid for through a grant. That's one of the things that we will do. We will look at the duplication of contracts. We will look at a lot of things where we, the city extended out, such as uh, draining fire hydrants and things of that nature. Uh, I don't know exactly what the cost is, but there's a lot of things you can do that you subbed out you can bring in-house, and you don't have to spend that extra money. 
we will look at all kinds of programs that will alleviate us constantly spending over and over again. And one thing in Williams administration, we will not have political patronage as far as giving people $150,000 contracts because they supported me. We're not going to do that because that continues the vicious cycle. Absolutely. Are there any crime fighting measures in place now that you would like to see removed? You have crime fighting experience, uh, extensive actually crime fighting experience. Are there any ones there right now that just aren't working, that need to be out, that are costing the city money, that aren't doing their job? Well, first of all, if you have an undercover unit, uh, Vice Squad, if they're not buying narcotics undercover, you, you disband the unit. You don't need it. We will buy drugs undercover. We will start an undercover unit because that's what Vice Squad was created for. You will find out who's dealing in narcotics because you will be purchasing directly from those individuals. It, it, it won't be a hit and miss. You won't hit the, 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 the wrong house with a search warrant because you will know. Our officers will go in and buy the narcotics and, and they will know who they bought narcotics off of. We will have the address and we can go back and do a search warrant. But I look at the way Wilmington is fighting crime now and I think the leadership is inadequate. I think the leadership has been there too long. And what we will do, we will bring the community in also to sit down with us and look at their initiatives like they did when I was on the police force. A lot of people think always don't work, always do work. You bring the clergy and the community in, we sit down with you and we say, okay, uh, let's say 27th and Pine, we have heavy narcotics dealing. You might not want to get involved, but, but the church may say, I have 15 people who watch this every day. You can go out and interview them, but please don't bring them involved. All right, they say, okay, the Brown Lincoln, the guy loads it up with guns every day. He loads it up with, with, with narcotics. We'll have surveillance out there. And when we start filming this and taking pictures, when we stop this gentleman with probable cause, it's right there. You have to have a link in the community. That's one of the things we will do. And, and the Wilmington police will go back to the police academy and get extensive public relations training. That's one of my number one goals that we're going to do. Sounds smart. Um, all right. Well, moving on. Understanding that the mayor's office doesn't set policy on immigration, what is your immigration stance? Well, when people come to this country, and this is a melting pot, and they work, and they're not committing crime, and they've been here for long periods of time, what are you going to do, send everybody home? I mean, this is their home. Let's face the music here. A lot of people don't want to talk about this, and they're afraid to talk about it. But you know what? We're all one people here, no matter what our stance is in life. We were talking about this in the, just a previous interview that I just gave. We got to stop worrying about drawing lines in the sand and pointing fingers. If we would all come together and do our part, this would be a much better world. Truly would. Now, people who come to this country, raise a family, get a job, they're not committing any crime, they're not bothering anybody, why can't we give them citizenship? So, amnesty? Absolutely. Why can't we do that? What's the problem? There's a whole lot of people that came through Alice, Alice Island uh, with, with forged papers that weren't legal either. That's right. Sure. That's right. Speaking of just uh, good contributing citizens, we, um, Mr. Vera here, specializes in re-entry education, uh, people leaving incarceration because as you're, the, the bold offensive plan to get people off the street will put more in jail. Delo the state of Delaware in the United States has the 19th highest incarceration rate. Let me, let me stop you on one thing. To get people off the street, it's not going to put more people in jail if these individuals will work with our plan. Remember what I said, it's a two-prong attack. If they want to come in and work with us, we are going to work with them. If these weapons that they turn in have been used in a homicide or a robbery and things of that nature, we're willing to take these guns and turn them over to property and bring these folks in to help them out. And I'm serious about that because I know you can't arrest your way out of this problem. And there's a lot of people out there in, the, in pain, they need help. Now, I'm not going with no hug a thug and all that nonsense you mm -hmm. hear about. We are going with pure facts, GED programs, job training programs, getting people back on the right track. And even we're going to have ministers in there, getting people's lives back together and trying to get their soul saved. Because once you do that, they're back on the right track. Believe me, yeah. you get your soul saved, you don't want to commit crime anymore. Now, let me, let me um, ask a question. We do have... We ha there are a lot of programs currently in the state right. for reentry and both before they exit um, the prison system and then once they're out and things like that. And they do address, just like I adapt and other programs, they address a lot of those issues. But yet we still don't really see the, the, the real positive effects of a, of a 
true reentry program, how would yours differ? Well, one of the things we would do when we bring businesses in and give incentives to, when we talk about incentives, we're talking about facelifts for buildings, we're talking about tax incentives, and if, if, if a company comes in and says, okay, we handle money, we can't hire felons, I would say, okay, you have two acres. What about the fence repair? What about the concrete that needs to be repaired? What about the motor vehicles that need to be shuttled from one place to another? Well, how come this person can't get that job? I'm going I'm to put the ball right in their court. Tell me why. They're not handling money. They don't have to go in the vault. So, so tell me why. Don't tell me they can't be on the premise for two acres. What you're telling me, if they can't be, they can't even walk by your facility. See, people use all kinds of avenues to make excuses why they can't hire felons. Or oh, we Absolutely. handle money. Or oh, we handle children. Well, if you have a school and the convicted felon is yards and yards away from the school area, they can still cut grass. They can prune. They can fix drains. They can be trained to do concrete. They can be trained to do uh, brick face lifting. All of these things. But it takes a bold leader to sit down with these folks and say, this is the way it's going to be done because we're going to give you incentives. And if you don't want to work with us and help these folks out, then you don't deserve public money. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the Joint Finance Committee met last week. Mm -hmm. um, they discussed Medicaid, a new proposal. Uh, what will the effect on the average Wilmington citizen be? Well, the new proposal, what are you talking about, managed care? Yeah. Well, it, it's going to be on the trial cases uh, right now. And if managed care doesn't work, it, it more than likely be repealed. This is my last year as chairman of Joint Finance. I'll be leaving in November. Um, if it doesn't work, I, I'm pretty sure it'll be repealed because if it, if, if it blows up in the state's face and it's not repealed, it will cost more in litigation than it would trying to place people in homes to get care. I, I'm a big uh, supporter of Medicaid. I don't, I, I, I propose that it shouldn't be cut ever since I've been on joint finance. It, w when people uh, lose their jobs and lose their health care or people get, become disabled and very sick, I know that personally I have a very ill mother. Um, Medicaid is essential for people to survive. Um, you know, a lot of people come to different events and talk about how they support the poor, but when they get in the, the house floor and other places, they don't talk like that. But I'm an advocate for the poor away from Dover, away from Washington, and into the community because we have a moral obligation as elected officials to support the poor and the disabled. And anyone that doesn't do that in this business shouldn't be elected. You know, one catastrophic injury to anybody in this room would probably put us all in the street. One major right. illness could put us all in the street. A again, I know because of a, a very ill mother, it's cost me thousands of dollars. But that doesn't matter to me. It's my job to take care of my mother. And it's our job to take care of our citizens as elected officials. Well, I agree. It is an obligation. Uh, where, where can that funding come from? You have a, a ton of experience. In the, as a state representative, uh, seeing how Delaware works, where are some areas we could use cuts, money, funds drawn for programs like Medicaid? Well, capital programs, uh, some of the capital programs where we, we want to rebuild the infrastructure. Uh, when it comes to the people, as long as we're, we're keeping the bridges uh, pretty much in check, well, because I want any overhead where you're having uh, over a river or over a, a community, I want to make sure those structural uh, fixtures are in place. But there's ways we can cut. There's certain programs we can just reduce. There's uh, other things we can reduce, like capital infrastructure. Maybe we may not pave roads for a few years. Some people might not like bumping into a pothole, but if it's a pothole and somebody getting dialysis, I'd rather pay for dialysis than pay for a pothole. You follow? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Wilmington has a considerable homeless population. Uh, what can we do to help get those people off the street? Well, first of all, the city of Wilmington shouldn't be in the real estate business. We have too many properties. I would like to see uh, Habitat for Humanity come in. Maybe we get some grants and renovate some of the houses that the city owns that we shouldn't be dealing with anyway. I mean, we're government. We shouldn't be in a real estate business. I'd rather give some of those places away and let Habitat for Humanity come and renovate them and try to subsidize people's uh, uh, rent, get them in these places. I'd just rather for them to be in, 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 in these houses than, than just having these vacant houses. I know it looks like I'm, I'm getting ready to do a lot of pie in the sky here, but I can tell you one thing. If I'm elected, you're going to see something that you've never seen before. I'm going to take some bold chances. I'm going to look at things where, where people are really struggling, people are poor, because again, government has a responsibility. It's not about making excuses why you can't do anything. 
government is the people, really. And I want people to know if this gentleman wins here, it will be their government. Um, let me ask a, a question. Uh, this is Impacto Cristiano, Impacto en la Comunidad, right? And um, we've invited you here so that the Hispanic community, amongst others, could really listen to um, what you're about and what you propose. So there's this new faith-based council and there are other organizations. You have some great Hispanic leaders on your team, but how will you really engage the Hispanic community um, to really, really get them involved in the decision making or at least to really listen to the community? Because I know that we've been in, in meetings before where the citizens um, on the hilltop or you know the areas where there's a large Hispanic population, they feel that they're not protected, that the police only come you know, when there's for crime and things like that, but they're not, there isn't that true sense of community with law enforcement, et cetera, to really make them feel safe. Many of the businesses um, open and close rather quickly up in that area because they may be great restaurants and great places, but people don't feel safe to come and eat and, and be there. So how do you, how do you really get engaged the, the Hispanic community? Well, one of the things I want to do, and, and I do have a great Hispanic staff, but one of the things I've been pushing them to do is to get the true leaders in the Hispanic community who really want to come to the table and roll up their sleeves. And, I, and I've been trying to, to, to tell them that I'm not the typical politician. You know, I was born and raised in Wilmington, and, and, and I understand the issues. I can't say I understand the Hispanic issues, but they're similar to the African Americans. I came up during the Civil Rights Movement. I remember when African Americans were saying pretty much what you're saying there. I believe you start with people from the community being in leadership. Also, a lot of people might not like some of the things that I say. I'm a pretty bold guy. I think we, I need, I'm need. i going to have to go in and I'm going to have to promote Latinos in the police and fire department. I'm going to have to hire more Latino police officers. Uh, people say that doesn't work. It does work because when an officer can get out of the car and speak Spanish, if that Latino community trusts that Latino police officer more than he does a black officer or a white officer, that doesn't matter to me. But they feel a connection. Correct. And when you feel the connection, you can work with that individual. And eventually, when that connection becomes a bond, they can get to learn to trust those other officers. And I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I know people don't trust people because of their race and, and they don't come from a certain part of a community. And we have to work to get that resolved and bring us all to the table. And again, I keep saying this over and over again. I, I'm so tired of people calling this neighborhood, that neighborhood. I, I want one Wilmington. That's what I'm shooting for. I have one of the, the most diverse campaign committees that any person has ever run in this country. And when we reveal it and let it out there, people are going to say, wow, this city is for everybody. Everybody. And all the players that come to the table if you're not coming in with solutions and you don't want to be a part and work with us, you're wasting your time coming in if you just want to come in and shout and jump up and down and point the finger. We're not about that. We want help. We want you to help us make this a better government. That's why we're bringing everybody to the table. I don't care, white, black, gay, straight, Hispanic, doesn't matter to me. We're all people. And that's what I want at the table. That's what I want in the room. I'm not window wizard. I need a good group of people to help me govern this city. That's what we're looking for. Great. What aspects of your policy could a high school student uh, come in and, and give you some influence? How, how would I reach you? How would I, let's, let's say it's me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm particularly interested in crime in Newark. How am I going to contact you? Uh, can I email you? Will you email me back? Now you're talking about my state legislative role? I'm, I'm talking about if elected mayor. Okay, if elected mayor, I really, I really wouldn't be paying much attention to the crime in Newark. No, yeah, no, yeah, Wilmington. Okay. Sorry. Well, yeah, we, we, we're going to have an open door policy every Wednesday. Also, we'll, we'll have a website that will stay up. We'll have three or four phone numbers where people can call, and we'll have an open door. Uh, the mayor's office will be open. There will be none of that stuff where people can't come up to the ninth floor to see the mayor. I think that causes alienation. Once you start to alienate yourself from the community and your constituency, you've lost the battle right there because people don't trust you. And we're, we're, we're planning on doing uh, several things. A lot, of, a lot of my team doesn't know this yet, but they better get used to it. They're going to be mentors. We're going to show that why other city employees should be mentors. We're going to roll our sleeves up. We're going to mentor children in schools. We are going to go into the schools and mentor kids. We're looking at bringing back an education department. I know a lot of people are going to say this is a waste of money, but when you have this type of dropout rate in the city of Wilmington, we have to reach out and find out why our kids are not doing, not doing well. 
we need liaison officers going into schools meeting with superintendents. I will be meeting with the superintendents as much as I can. If I don't do it, someone else from my staff will. We have to stop this dropout rate. We have to get into the homes to find out what the problems are. Because when kids don't go to school, kids come out hostile, kids come out upset and sad, there's something going on in the home. And we're looking at putting teams of social service workers together, not to take children away from their parents, but we would like to go in and find a loving relative. If that mother or father or aunt is having some difficulty with narcotics or alcohol, to try to get them into a program and get that child to a loving relative until the house becomes stabilized. It's the only way this is going to work. I do want to add that uh, Dennis does have a open door policy now. Uh, you can meet with Dennis Williams at uh, Evelyn's Soul Food um, every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday at 9 a.m. to talk about your, uh, your issues and so he can share uh, his platform. So he, the open door policy is not when he becomes mayor. But right now, he is doing it as busy as he is. Every Wednesday at 9 a.m., you can go to Evelyn Soul Food at, uh, what is it, 13th and? 15th and Market. 15th and Market at 9 a.m. Just walk in if you have a question. If you're, if you're timid or shy, write it down, your name, address, mm -hmm. phone number. And he has put uh, the, you know, the, the gavel down for us to make sure that we do our job and respond. Uh, if he can't respond, we will respond right away to any questions or concerns that you have regarding his platform and what are the issues that are important to you. Also, you can get more information uh, if you go to www.williams4wilmington.com. If you go on that website, there's a section for you to put your input, ask a question, you can volunteer, you can uh, make a donation or request uh, to be a part of the team somehow. And we have an open door policy in Dover also. I mean, we're open, my office is open. I tell people if I'm on the floor, you can go in my office and sit down and wait until I get off the floor from debating a bill and come back and we can talk about your issue. That's great, okay. I think that's really important. Um, and actually, apathy is an issue for young kids um, and young adults uh, for the community here, obviously. Uh, can you explain why it's important for us uh, to get involved? for everyday people to get involved in the policies in, in talking to you and explaining how we feel. Uh, why, what makes that important? Well, if, if you want change and true change and you really want to see young people get involved, you want to see our most vulnerable protected with Medicaid, you will support a Williams administration. I mean, we are going to be there. My record has always been, an, I've always been an advocate for the poor. Even before I was elected, when I was a police officer, I defended female police officers. You go back and people will tell you that Dennis Williams has always been a little different. When I first went on the police force, it was extremely male chauvinist. And you know, I didn't like the way female police officers were being treated, and I, and I stepped to the plate. I didn't like it. I mean, some guys wouldn't say anything and thought it was funny. I never thought it was funny. My grandmother was a dominant factor in my life. And Never let anyone change your character. Be who you are. I'm always going to be who I am. Some people say sometimes I'm a little brash, I'm a little pushy, but I can tell you one thing. I have a heart of gold. I care about people. I understand situations when they're bad. I have stepped to issues that a lot of people run away from. I talk to young people every day. I explain to them you've got to vote because if you don't vote, you don't count. You talk <coughs> about you don't have any jobs and you talk about you don't have any recreation. Well. If you don't, look at the people that's already in office that's not doing the things that you want them to do. So if you don't vote for change, you're going to get the same old thing. Well, we're, we're um, coming up to the end of the program. First of all, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're, we're inviting different candidates to come and join Impacto Cristiano, whether it's on radio or television, so that we can understand and it's important for the Hispanic community to come out and vote and really be an influence um, this year and choose your candidates and learn yes. and really get educated. Um, thank you, Nancy, for joining us as well. You're welcome. Yes. If I have a minute, I do want to add that as uh, some Hispanics are currently independent, if they want to vote in the primary to vote for uh, Dennis Williams, they have to be one of, one of the two parties, correct? They have to be Democrat. They, you have to, right, you have to change your party mm -hmm. if you are independent. If you're not independent in the state of Delaware, you cannot vote in the primary election September 11th. The, the deadline to change your party is May 25th. So if you need information, uh, you can contact us or contact the Department of Elections.
Thank you. So you guys are welcome again. to come to Dover anytime you want to. Believe me, come Thank down. Thank you. Come down, Thank watch you. some of the debates, watch some of the committees, and you can come to my office, and I'll, I'll show you around, watch some of the live debates. Really, get a chance to come down. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you very Thank much, you. and thank mm -hmm. you for everyone that tuned in today and is watching the program. Uh, we hope that this session has been informative for you. Get more education. Find out more about the candidates. This is Impacto Cristiano. I'm Danette Rivera. And with me today was Joseph Yeras, who is one of our interns at the University of Delaware. Um, and thanks again. And we hope to see you again at our next show. Thank you. Serio Radial Impacto, junto a Malaquías Reyes, presentaron Impacto Cristiano. Agradecemos por su sintonía y les invitamos para que el próximo sábado nos acompañen en una edición más. Si tiene comentarios, sugerencias, peticiones o testimonios, escríbanos al PO Box 30024 Wilmington, Delaware 19805 o al correo electrónico mreyes 63004 arroba aol punto com. Y no olviden nuestra línea telefónica 302-377-0403 302-377-0403 Hasta una próxima edición Serio Radial Impacto, junto a Malaquías Reyes, presentaron Impacto Cristiano. Agradecemos por su sintonía y les invitamos para que el próximo sábado nos acompañen en una edición más. Si tiene comentarios, sugerencias, peticiones o testimonios, escríbanos al PO Box 30024 Wilmington, Delaware 19805 o al correo electrónico mreyes 63004 arroba aol punto com. Y no olvide nuestra línea telefónica 302-377-0403 302-377-0403 Hasta una próxima edición